Biobalance HealthCast episode 222, treating symptoms of aging with bioidentical testosterone pellets. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. Dr. Kathy Maupin and I are going to talk today about, uh, in more detail, further about a conversation that we were having in our previous podcast. Uh, we were discussing the disconnect that occurs between patients and their physicians when their physicians either don't know, don't understand, don't embrace or support what Kathy does in her work. and. That is changing. More doctors are becoming aware. I would love to know. I mean, you've had thousands well, of patients. I'd love to know what percentage of them were doctors or doctors' wives or husbands. Uh, I don't know if you have that data. I but. don't have the data, but I have tons of dentists and mm -hmm. dentist wives. Yeah. I have tons of chiropractors. Right. Maybe a little bit more open-minded. I have a lot of specialists, meaning ENTs and anesthesiologists and anesthetists and 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 um do you have tons of bariatric surgeons no oh, i don't sorry. no <laughs> but it was, we, it was a weight joke i sorry. got it yeah i got it i ignored it on purpose no. <laughs> <laughs> we do this a lot while we're writing these we well, have fun doing this anyway so i i have I, I can't tell you the percentage but i can tell you that i have tons of nurses too and it's a growing so number it's a gr so yeah it's, it's getting more, more medical more people become aware and in their own lives embrace this treatment then they change the message that goes out to their mm -hmm. their patients but i have a personal story my my wife has seen the same gynecologist all her adult life who i also know who you and know. have known since residency and when she told him when she first started coming to you for treatment three four years ago mm -hmm. uh she had been to see her gynecologist who said, you are reaching the age now where I'm concerned about bone density. Mm -hmm. We're going to put you on this medicine that's going to prevent because the test results that we have show that you're into osteopenia, osteopenia. Mm -hmm. and drifting towards osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good thing because when you get old and you have osteoporosis, if you fall or walk into a desk or whatever, you can break a bone. And she's in her early 50s, so that's kind of yeah. early. And, uh so she said, I'm really reluctant to take this medicine. I understand it has some side effects. And he said, it does, and we'll watch for those. But it's really the best treatment that's out there for what you're dealing with. It's what we know how to do. So then I talked her into coming to see you, and she started pellet hormone replacement therapy. Estrogen with, and testosterone. With you. And the three or four years has passed and she went back to her doctor this month mm -hmm. and and he's been and every time she's seen him he's like so are you still doing that thing and she's like yeah i'm still doing that thing and then he just smiles he never voices an he opinion. never asks he never asks for information he never takes a position <laughs> uh he respects her intelligence but he kind of smiles knowingly like idiot uh but he doesn't say i mean that's interpretive I'm, i know you know i'm not in the I room know. but that's her interpretation of it mm -hmm. but she feels that the results are worth continuing mm -hmm. so she went back to see him this month <laughs> and he said oh it's time for your bone density test mm -hmm. so they gave her bone density test and he came back in with the results and he's a very data-driven guy and he came back okay. in with the charts and the graphs and he's like this is really interesting. I've never seen this before. And she said, And we well, see it all the time. What are you talking about? And he says, Your bone density has improved in quality to the point that you now register as normal. You don't have mm -hmm. osteopenia. You don't have osteoporosis. You've come back more than 10%. And that's, that is amazing. When you look at the drugs out there, they can't do that. When you look at just oral estrogen, it can't do that. But pellet, estrogen, and testosterone together Can does do that, that all done that. that time. And she didn't even tell him about all the wonderful things that she's she's lost weight. She's I mean, she's got great muscle mass. She has great sex. So I mean, you know, all of those great things. So I'm told. Uh, but I mean, she I mean, those are the things I would expect either him to ask or but you know her to tell. Uh, I'm sure if they have discussed that though assumptively he would assume that's a result of his recommendations and his caretaking of her i mean he's an excellent doctor no i know but he has nothing he life. hasn't given her anything to help with those I know, things but 
I, I, who knows? I mean, but that's yeah, part of our right. conversation. That's the disconnect Why between are doctors, doctors and patients. who are made aware of this not more curious and not mm-hmm. more investigatory, who, who don't call you or look on your website and say, what's this all about? Is there something mm-hmm. to it? Well, you, you described it. The, a lot of doctors are um, data-driven. In other words, yeah. if you can see it on paper, not on the patient. I mean, I can see it on the patient. Mm-hmm. I can see the patients look different. They their goiters go away. They're, I mean, their skin looks better. Well, and you take a lot They're, of before and after pictures. Yeah, we so do. You can see it, and I can see the difference. Sometimes I can't remember exactly the difference, but I can see it in the pictures. Right, and that's for a reason because I want to show it to the patient. Yeah, and say, look how much better you look. Right. So, um, in any case, they look at numbers. Now, numbers really, what we're taught in medical school is numbers just help you take care of the patient. It's it's your physical exam, it's your observation, and your and your history taking that is mostly what gives you a diagnosis. And it's just the numbers that give you a confirmation or a baseline. So that's how medicine was taught, and I believe, because my daughter just went through training, she was taught that as well, that numbers are there to support what you think or to help you diagnose and follow somebody's treatment. Unfortunately, doctors have disconnected from their original training and have gone to, it's faster to look at a number. So most of my patients who have thyroid problems, okay, and I've, I'm taking care of their thyroid now, but their internal medicine doctors continually look at it and go, oh, yeah, you're on too much thyroid. But they don't ask the patient if she's better. Right. So they say, the lab looks like not too much thyroid here. And my patients say, I feel fine. I have no side effects. I have lost weight. My hair grows. My nails grow. I'm fine. When you had me on the lower dose, it didn't happen. I still had all my symptoms. So So, so what's the risk of a higher dose? If the doctor says, oh, you're on too much thyroid, we need to bring that down. There is no risk except for a high heart rate. But if your pulse is normal, there's no risk. I mean, that's a side effect of hyperthyroidism or too much thyroid but if you don't have that if you don't have tachycardia or or runs of palpitations then then you don't have any problems so and you, so you monitor for that right i monitor for that and As, let me rephrase that you don't have any problems if you're on testosterone and all my patients are on testosterone okay if you're not on testosterone and you're on too high uh thyroid it does decrease your bone density okay okay but because I have everyone on testosterone, it does not, hmm. and the bones still are getting are getting thicker by the year. So you've compensated for the negative, right? And for those doctors that are data driven, you have that data, right? But on the lab test, it says, "Oh, it's a little high." Yeah, but they they don't think about the testosterone or the so other issues. The same thing is true on the lab data when they look at the amount of testosterone that they right. have, right? Because they don't know what you know. Right. They look at women's testosterone. And if you do a total testosterone on women and and you to you need to get them to a certain percentage or a certain active testosterone, you have to actually get a higher testosterone level, one that might be not in the in the women's range. Let me rephrase this. When you get older your t- total testosterone drops and the percentage of active testosterone drops. Okay? So for me to to get you back to the same active testosterone that you had when you were younger, I actually need a bigger total testosterone. Now, it's not working. It doesn't do anything. It's just that active part. So my goal is the free testosterone or the active testosterone. Well, Doctors who don't know this and don't know that women decrease their percentage of active testosterone, and that's what's really important, just look at the total and go, that's too much testosterone. But they don't know all of it. It's kind of like somebody treating themselves on the Internet who isn't a doctor. Right. Because they don't know all the information. A, a little learning is a dangerous thing. Right. So, so unless they understand that about women and testosterone, they're going to make the wrong assumption and scare people for no apparent reason. Total testosterone, the inactive form of testosterone, it's invisible to your body. You don't see it. It's just the active form that can work. So total testosterone, the the inactive testosterone, is just sort of a, a carrier 
in it's, your bloodstream? It's storage. It's, it's storage. Just storage. So if you had a huge blood loss, right? Then the uh, testosterone molecule that has a, it's like a cap over it. It's a protein over it that inactivates it. If you lost blood and then lost your free testosterone, then some of those would lose their cap and they'd become active. So it's storage. So it's like having a savings account, and when you when you have a bill come in that was unexpected, you go to your savings account and pull it out right. and pay the bill. Mm -hmm. So you need to have some savings mm -hmm. of testosterone. Mm -hmm. And it's, okay. and it's only stored in your blood. There's no place for testosterone to be stored. It's not like saliva is stored in your salivary glands. There's right. no gland it's to store it. It's a reservoir that can be drawn in, upon. Right. It's stored in your blood like most other uh, endocrine or hormones right. that we consider hormones. They're stored in our blood. And most of them are in inactive form. So your treatments are not every day, every week. So if it's stored in the blood and the blood regenerates every seven days, how do you... How do you make it last for four months? The blood doesn't regenerate every seven days. Okay, I thought it did. Red cells are being made all the time and broken down all the time, but okay. this isn't in the red cells. This okay. is in your plasma. So basically, the pellet is is secreting small amounts of testosterone all the time. So it's the pellet, dissolving. The pellet is that dissolving. You put in the body, right? Is the reservoir? Yes. It's and as if your my ovary was making it and putting it out every day, just like ovaries ovaries do. do but my naturally. ovaries, women have women's ovaries just basically shrivel up and die. Yeah. Men don't have that problem; they just decrease in production. Okay. So we actually need to be replaced. Men need to have testosterone added to. Okay. So when we look when we look at a woman's testosterone, our ovaries are making nothing after menopause and even 10 years before. Mm -hmm. So we have to replace it. So what we do is the best way to do it is not to take a pill and we don't even have uh, testosterone sure. pills anymore, yeah. but gels and creams go up and down every day. Well, the pellet uh, actually keeps the blood, blood level about the same every day. So we don't have that up and down testosterone level, which makes us kind of moody. So it's better to have the same dose every single day of testosterone, just like men do. That's interesting. I, personally, I know, I, I know and I have been told that I get really moody when I'm at the end of my cycle and it's time for me to get a replacement. When, that's just because you're deficient in testosterone. Exactly. So, so you get moody when you're deficient. Right. And so we, get, we usually we can get moody when we're deficient as well. But... But when we're doing this every day, it's, then we're deficient every day yeah. by the end of the day. So then if we're you taking look something emotionally once a volatile day. and they discount you because you're a female who's subject to tidal, you know, way, all that garbage from... <laughs> all the garbage. So what I'm trying to do is give us back our hormones, but we don't need those ups and downs once we're not childbearing. Yeah. So we can have the same hormone all the time and not have the emotional ups and downs. So you can have some stability and some sanity. Right. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> See, that made you uh, speechless. It, it does because it, it to me it's so obvious, but it's obvious to me because I have experienced it in mm -hmm. my life and in the life of my wife and a lot of my friends who see you. Mm -hmm. So I get perplexed when we have these conversations about other physicians who are out there, like my wife's gynecologist, who knows her, has known her for forty years is respectful of her, appreciates her intelligence, all that, but he still just smiles knowingly and well, doesn't he's educate not knowingly. himself. Well, but archly, unknowingly. Smiles archly yeah. uh, when the discussion comes up, and he doesn't pursue getting any information to educate himself about it, mm -hmm. although she's curious now whether he will because he sees the data on the, on the bone density test. You know? I, I don't even try to, I, I don't try to crack through with the doctors. I feel like... Once they see enough yeah. really good results, they're go they're going to either read the book or, or come to me or send their wives to me or their husbands to me. and Or some of them haven't reached the age where they would actually feel like this, so they just right. don't get it. Right. So I'm just waiting for them to get older. And that's what the patient that I was talking about that was very bold and told her doctor, look, you must not care about me because you're not doing pap smears on me, but you're worried. You say you're worried about me taking these hormones. She, you know, she said, "Look, I'm wait. I'm going to stick with you mm -hmm. until you get that old, until you're as old as I am, and then you tell me how you feel." So that's that's a very very 
uh, forgiving and, assertive and a very for, forgiving attitude as well. Yeah. Because a lot of patients, their doctors would never know because they just leave their doctors. They just go right. find a doctor who's much more open-minded about uh, about hormones, but also more open-minded and, and more positive about their health. Well, and they can't leave their doctor for you. That's not a risk. No, if, that's, know, I'm not Other taking, medical professionals are concerned because you're not a general physician. I'm making the other doctor's lives easier. They never have to talk about hormones again. Right. So, I mean, either the urologists and the gynecologists so and the family business. doctors, I'm not taking their patients away. They can now use their time to do something very positive with their patients. Right. The other thing is, I'm not just doing this. This is, this is a... I mean, I'm providing the treatment, but I am also partnering with my patient. Yes. Because I I can give them the right hormones. I can help them balance their hormones. Only they can change their relationship with their wives and husbands. Only they can exercise. Only they can eat properly and take their supplements. Only they can follow directions. I mean, granted, Pellets are the easiest hormone because we just put them in every four to six months and you don't have to do anything else. But there are supplements some people have to take. There are other hormones some people have to take. There is a partnership of I'm drawing up the plan like the architect and they're the builder. But their builder is their body and their mind because without their effort, then they're not going to be as healthy as they could be with this treatment. So you play with the chemistry set, and you I don't play get with it. those things balanced. I, I am very expert with do, my chemistry uh, set. Yes, you're, you're not the mad scientist. Yes, you're I'm just not a scientist. Mm-hmm. But so, so what you're saying is you can get the physio- physiology balanced, but I still have to control my appetite or my habit or my remembrance of you have to take this thyroid pill in the morning 15 minutes before you take coffee or any other thing that supplement whatever besides water without or else you cancel out the benefit of the mm-hmm. thyroid pill so you tell me that mm-hmm. and if i forget that that's on me or if i don't follow the protocol mm-hmm. that's on me right. so part of what you do is invite your patients to participate responsibly mm-hmm. in getting well that's right. And every time they come in for their pellets, they see my nurse practitioners, they also participate in them getting well. Make sure they're on track. Make sure they're they're getting to their ideal weight or they're exercising or they're seeing their gynecologist for their pap smear or their mammogram and breast exam. So they're, ma- they're making sure these things happen because that's what we ask them every time they come in. Are you current on all of these things? We're not just interested in, here, take a hormone, see ya, get out, get on the conveyor belt and see ya, because I, you know, I, had a, a patient's, I, I had a patient leave me and go to this other place and come back, and she said, OMG. She said, this, is, this was horrible. It was like they just like put me on this little conveyor belt, and I went to the nurse practitioner. I said, what about this? What about that? And she said, I don't know anything about that stuff. Don't ask me any questions. She said, I'm just here to stick your pellets in. See ya. And she, she walked out of the room. Wow. And... And patients said, I went running back here. And she said, and the dose wasn't right either. <laughs> so she said, I came running back here because you are following me and making sure that I'm getting what I need and that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Well, and you and your nurses have experience and training to be able to participate in those conversations. Again, you don't have the power. You don't have the authority. But I can say to you, Dr. Moppin, I'm really struggling with the thyroid pill example of, mm-hmm. of remembering to take it and wait 15 minutes. I catch myself with a cup of coffee almost immediately because mm-hmm. first thing I do is turn on the coffee pot. And you suggest, or the nurses suggest, put a sticky note in your coffee pot. Have you waited 15 minutes? <laughs> yeah, know, that's until, one of my nurses. <laughs> until you rehabituate. I would have said take a shower first. Yeah, something. You know, change, your, change your habit exactly. so that you can get your thyroid. But in. you have experience in offering those suggestions that are helpful. And it's not controlling, it's not paternalistic, Mm -hmm. it's Mm -hmm. not authoritarian. It's like, well, you have to climb this hill, but let me show you this path over here doesn't have any rocks in it. You you can climb this one. Yeah, you can can learn it yourself, but if I've already got the answer, then it's so much easier. And and oftentimes I I learn from my patients who tell me, well, I did this, or I did this. And you're like, let me write that down. Yeah, that's behavior modification that we all share with one another. And then I share it with the nurses, they share it with me. You know, we have those conversations, so we have something good to tell our patients if they've got an issue. In summary, 
of this portion, this concept, part of what you talk about with a discussion of the disconnect between the goal of the patients and the goal of the physician mm -hmm. is that the physicians are trained to manage symptoms. Mm -hmm. And you tend to look at, okay, are you still having headaches? Well, let's, and treat one thing at a time. And, and treat that. And you, the patient's goal is, I want to feel better. I want to have a high-quality life. I want to be healthy, which is a more global concept mm -hmm. than I just don't want to have headaches. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So they have to come together in a zone where there's a more global perspective. Mm -hmm. And you approach your patients from that global perspective. Let's talk about your quality of life. You're going to get old. You're going to die. Things are going to happen to you. But we can work together to make sure that you have the most capacity and the most improved quality of life that you can have for as long as you're alive. Right, for the longest time. Absolutely. And, and you can find out about that if you will go and read The Secret Female Hormone or if you will go to the website, myobalancehealth.com, and look at the testimonials, look at the information, look at the research that's all posted there for you so that you can educate yourself because we still haven't caught enough doctors in our net. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.